Welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. If you can hear me, can I get some light flashes or car horns? All right, thank you guys. Uh, my name is Pastor Michael. I'm happy to see you all here on this beautiful day that God has made. I um, have a couple quick things to go over before we get into our service. Um, I have an announcement uh, from our outreach team. Uh, we are continuing our outreach project with Bishop Elementary. Um, and there are some items that we're looking to collect to help uh, the teachers and students as the students are going to be uh, gradually returning to their classrooms around mid-October. Um, and the elementary students are the first group to return. So 
Uh, we have a list of things that it's going to go up on our Facebook page, um, and we'll have it out with the next uh, bulletin as well. But things like hand sanitizer, tissues, Sharpies, um, all that kind of stuff. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, reach out to Barb or Fonda. Um, you can also, of course, make a cash donation uh, that we can then use to purchase some of those things. And if you want to do that, if you can just put it in the offering plate. Um, and mark that it's for the Bishop School Outreach. Um, so we're going to get that ramped up and ready to go as the students are getting ready to, to get back into the classroom at least part time. Um, do you have anything? Any other things? Are we going to do that quote after worship? Ah, yes. Uh, also, after worship, um, please, you are invited to stick around uh, in the pavilion for a quote unquote. Uh, coffee hour, but uh, it's bring your own coffee. Um, and of course, we need to social distance and be good about following our health guidelines. But you are welcome to stick around and catch up with your friends and loved ones um, in our faith community here um, for as long as you would like. So please, if you are able, uh, stick around and we'll continue to do that every Sunday until the weather uh, is not cooperating. So um, Hopefully you can can hang around for a little bit. Um, I think that's all we've got. So we will move on to our worship service. Good morning, church. I'm Dave Monson, liturgist for today. And will you please join me in a call to worship? God has forgiven us and drawn us close. Reconciling us through Jesus Christ. Who has lavished upon us the fullness of the blessed Holy Spirit. With, With glad and grateful hearts, we praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Our opening hymn is hymn number 101, From All That Dwells Below the Skies. Blessings know no boundaries that faith cannot cross. Strengthen us to trust in your mercy, reach out for your healing, and receive your reconciliation. Amen. And we'll continue with hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
affliction. Merciful Savior, your suffering has saved our lives, secured our future, and restored us to relationship with God. Remove the shame and fear that cause us to cower in your presence. By the power of your Spirit, open our eyes and hearts to your word of love, mercy, healing, and blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second scripture reading, our first scripture reading is from Genesis 45, 1 through 15. Joseph reveals himself to his brother. Remember, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers and came into Egypt and got good help. He was good in Egypt. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him. Then Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of the Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed they were at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here, for God sent me before your preserve, to preserve life. For the famine, famine has been in the land for two years, and there are five more years in which there will be plenty, neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you remnants of the earth and keep alive for you, my many survivors, so that not so, excuse me, so it was not you who sent me here, but God has made me a father of Pharaoh and Lord of all this house and ruler of all Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father's house and say to him, Thus saith your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me. You will you and your children and your children's children will be will be as flock, your herds and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have will not become poverty. Now your eyes and eyes are on the brothers, Benjamin. See, that is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how great I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then I fell upon my brother Benjamin's neck and wept. Well, Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed his brothers and went, went upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Christ has provided for us from his own table of blessings. Anointing and abundance overflows. Let us offer our gifts together from the bounty he has given. We will now collect our offering.
You now join me in our doxology number 95. Gracious Lord, you have given us more mercy than we could imagine and more blessings than we deserve. Receive now these gifts as tokens of our gratitude to you, that your mercy may, may be multiplied and your blessings abound to embrace all of those in need. Amen. I invite you now to a time and attitude of prayer. Holy God, become before you as a community of faith, thankful for the blessings, the grace, and the mercy that you continue to bestow upon us. Even when we have failed in sin, you have never turned away from us and continue to watch over us and walk with us throughout our lives. Today we lift up all the things that are on our hearts and minds as you taught us to bring everything to you in prayer. We lift up all of those who are in need of healing, whether physically, emotionally, or mentally. We lift up all of those who are working so diligently to help heal us, from doctors and nurses to surgeons, research scientists, lab technicians, and so many others. We ask that you continue to guide their hands and efforts and help us to be good and responsible individuals with our own health that we may be able to do the work you call us to in this world. We also give you thanks and lift up the lives of those who work so diligently to protect us in this world. We lift up all of those who serve in our military and armed forces, our police and firefighters, our first responders, and so many others who work to keep us safe in this world. God, we ask that you would guide them in their actions and all that they do, keep them safe and strong. And God, for those who are far away from home right now, we pray that they may be able to return home soon, that we could begin to see an end to conflict around this world. We also lift to you our nation and all the nations of the world and the leaders of the nations. And God, we pray that you would touch their hearts and minds, guide them in the work that they do, that we might work for the betterment of all humanity and all creation, not just the select few individuals. We ask that you would help us all to show mercy and grace to everyone we encounter. Help us to be a reflection of your love for the world and the life of Jesus Christ in the world, as we are called to be your body in the world. All of these things, as well as those we keep quietly upon our hearts and minds, we lift to you this day in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins without fear to the one who yearns to embrace us, forgive us, protect us, and bless us. If you would please join together with me in our prayer of confession. Have mercy on us, Lord Jesus. We are tormented. Our lives have been disrupted by the devil and by our own devilish desires and evil exploits. We are dismayed at your presence 
anguished by the awful fallout of our own failures. We cannot take back what we have said or undo what we have done or atone for the agony we have caused. We are haunted by the past, plagued by the present, and fearful of the future. We shrink away from your gaze as strangers outside your circle of blessing. Yet the faith you have planted in us reaches out for your favor, returns to your presence, and hungers for your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take a few moments for silent prayer and confession. Beloved children of God, our God kisses us with kindness, forgiving our sins, preserving our lives, and restoring our souls through the abundant provision of our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive now that for which faith has hungered. You are forgiven and healed in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please join together with me in our affirmation of faith, where we are using the Nicene Creed from page 880 in the hymnal. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy, universal, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our second scripture reading is from Matthew 15, 10 through 28. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that the bottles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know what the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you were saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if the one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, or adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defiles a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile the Canaanite woman of faith. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Jesus then came at a Canaan woman from the region, came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, 
son of David, my daughter is tormented by demons. But he did not answer her all at all. And his disciples came, urging him to say, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before me, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs of the wall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faithfulness. Let it be done for you as you wish. And your daughter was sealed in instantly. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our next hymn is Hear God Here. scripture reading for this morning comes from Romans chapter 11 verses 1 through 2a which means the first half of verse 2 and then continues in verses 29 through 32. This is uh, 
titled Israel's Rejection is Not Final. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so that they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you would join me again in an attitude of prayer. With open arms, you welcome all who call on your name, who acknowledge you as a Lord and look to you in faith. No one stands outside the circle of your mercy and love. And so we come to offer you our worship, to declare that you are our God and that we are your people, called and chosen by you from the very beginning. Through the presence of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see you here. Open our minds to receive your truth, and our mouths to speak and sing your praise. For you alone are God, worthy of all praise and worship, now and to the end of time. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this morning we are finishing our September sermon series, Broken, Good News for Tough Times. Throughout this series, we have been focusing on the 8th, 9th, 10th, and now 11th chapters of the Book of Romans. The Book of Romans is a letter from Paul to the church in Rome, a faith community that he had never met, but one that he wanted to offer encouragement and try to help build them up. Paul even dreamed of one day visiting this faith community. But Paul also knew that the life of Christians at this time in history was often a perilous one, as the world around them was becoming more diverse and unpredictable in many ways. Well, heads up, God is on a mission, and God has a plan. Now, if we're honest, we may kind of screw it up sometimes, or slow it down, become a bit of a hindrance, but God works through all of it regardless. Despite our errors or challenges, we cannot stop God or God's plan. For instance, God calls a people as God chooses them. Then they become disobedient, but God saves them anyway. God's people are taken captive. Once again, we are freed. So God gives the chosen people, the law, all the while knowing that the people will fail to obey this law. God then sends judges and prophets, but the people still disobey the law given to them, and they continue to break their end of the covenant that they entered into with God. So then God sends the Christ, the very rock of salvation, hewn out of God's own people, but God's chosen people reject Jesus. And this, even this rejection of the way of salvation, God still uses so that Gentiles may be grafted into the plan of God for salvation. God widens the circle to include more people than just the group whom God had chose to begin with. Yes, without question, God has a purpose and a plan. Without any doubt, God is in control. Now, in the midst of this global pandemic, many people are probably questioning just what God's plan is in this moment in time. People are asking why God would allow something like this to happen. What possible plan could God have for this time in history that a global pandemic had to happen? There are some who believe that God caused this pandemic, that God's plan was to punish us. 
Others argue that the pandemic is a test of our faith in God. But we'll come back to that in a few moments. As we have navigated through this series on Paul's letter to the Romans, we have seen how God repairs the brokenness in our own souls through the grace and God's unwavering, inseparable love. We have seen throughout this series how God overcomes the brokenness in human relationships and how God unites us in Christ as chosen and beloved children. We must remember that God's plan is restoration and wholeness. And we can see how Paul trusts in this as he sorts through the frustrating divisions between the Jews and the Gentiles. We can see how Paul trusts in this as he sorts through the law in God's grace. We can see how Paul trusts in this as he waxes poetic about spirit and flesh, labor pains, height and depth, and even chosenness. From Paul's point of view, the rebellion of all creation is purposed and used by God so that God might then show mercy to creation. God uses the salvation of the Gentiles to inspire jealousy in the hearts of the chosen ones, according to Paul. So you can see the mercy of our God and how it extends to all people, hopefully. Even this truth is a part of the plan of God. Now, I admit and understand that it can be difficult to talk about God's plan or admitting and owning that God, not us, is the one in control. I, I really understand this, I promise especially since we are often not fully aware of the entirety of the plan or maybe even any of it at different times, we are not in the driver's seat and that is hard for us as humans. And yes, I realize the irony of what I just said seems that many of you are sitting in the driver's seat of your car. But we like to be in control or at least we like to think we're in control. And Another part of the reason that it is difficult is because we still see so much brokenness in our world. It might lead us to ask questions like, if God is in control, then why do people kill one another in the streets? Or we might want to question, why do some people have more than enough while others languish in poverty, starvation, and homelessness? We might even find ourselves pondering, why do I lose the people that I love and why, oh why, does there seem to be no end to my grief and suffering? And those are real questions that real people struggle with. I know that I have at points in my own life, and I'd be willing to guess that most of you, if not all of you, have struggled with either these questions or similar ones. Unfortunately, questions like these are some of life's unanswerable questions. We can speculate on different rationalizations, but excuse me, the truth is that we really do not always have concrete answers for them. Despite what remains broken though, we can trust that God is still on a mission and we can still trust that God is working all things for good. We can trust that God is still working for healing we can trust that God is still working for restoration. And that, my friends, is grace. God being on a mission. God working for all things good. God working for healing and restoration. All of those things are parts of God's love and grace for God's creation. And I get it. I understand the struggles and challenges that we are all hindered with. I share those struggles with you. Just because I'm a pastor does not somehow exempt me from asking some of those same questions, wrestling with the brokenness of myself and of this world. After all, the ways of God are often mysterious. Plus, let's be honest, the arc of human history has bent in ways that may seem to directly defy God's goodness. But we must remember that God's purpose is mercy and God's method is grace. The part of the good news 
is that we, God's creation, are invited to participate in God's mission of restoration. That's right. We are called to join God in the mission of restoration. We have been invited to work with God, alongside God, to heal the broken places. And there are a lot of broken places. From broken people to broken relationships, to broken hearts, and so much more, there is a lot of brokenness in our world that needs to be healed, and God has called us to help. And while our health regulations might make it seem like it is harder or even impossible in some cases to help in that healing, there are still opportunities. The Holy Spirit is always moving and opening opportunities to us. Now, some of those opportunities may scare us. Some we may miss, distracted by other things going on in our lives. And some we are able to see clearly and engage with fully. I think one of the biggest examples of feeling this brokenness right now for many is the apparent fracturing of our faith communities. We are not able to join together in our sanctuaries for worship. We are not able to have our big sit-down meals together. And let's be honest, as Methodists, that's a big part of what we do. Food's not involved. It's not an official Methodist meeting. We are not able to do so much of what we have held as part of our identity as Christians and members of our churches. Believe me, I see those feelings of brokenness. I feel those same feelings of brokenness. But there are still things we can do, and many of you are already doing them. We can call each other and catch up with our friends who we have not seen in person for so long. We can send cards, write letters, write emails, or send text messages. I think if we can work to rebuild our sense of community with our loved ones, our fellow beloved children of God, that will go a very long way in helping us to heal some of that brokenness that we are experiencing. Now, I mentioned that there are a lot of different feelings about this pandemic, about it being a way that God is punishing us or testing our faith. And everyone is going to have their own feelings or opinions and beliefs about that. For me, the biggest challenge in the world is that we have free will, which means we can say and do things that hurt others. And ultimately, I believe that God works for restoration and mercy and grace. I do not believe that God caused this pandemic, but I do believe that God is going to and has been using this pandemic for other things, other ways to get us to think outside the box, maybe, to find new ways to connect with one another and those who don't yet know God. I believe that there is still a lot that is yet to come that God has planned to help us come out of the other side of this that much better and stronger. Now, as we close this series, I want to challenge you. I want to ask you a question that I hope you will carry with you this week and, and much further beyond. And it's a question that may not be easy to answer right away. You want need some time to think through it and discern how you would answer this question. But it is a question we must ask ourselves again and again if we are to take that invitation from God to the mission of restoration. And that question is this, how then do we respond to God's invitation to participate in God's mission of restoration with our lives? Well, that's a big question, but it's one that I want you all to hear those words, hold them in your heart, and remember that it doesn't matter how old or young you are, it doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. It doesn't matter how physically strong or weak you may be. We can all, every single one of us, participate with God in the mission of restoration and healing, the brokenness in this world. Amen.
We will close our service today with hymn number 181, Ye Servants of God. children of God, the God who forgives, reconciles, heals, and blesses, is with you today and forevermore. The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. God has gifted you with forgiveness and graced you with reconciliation. Go now and share God's gift with the distressed and the estranged. Christ has called you close to him and healed you from torment. Go now and call others to receive Christ's mercy and healing. Go now in peace. Amen. Amen. Facebook friends, thank you for joining us this morning, and we will see you same time next Sunday. God bless.